Earlier today, presumptive nominee Joe Biden uh, addressed the allegations of sexual assault against him by a former Senate staffer. Uh, he flatly, of course, denied uh, that he assaulted the staffer uh, and pointed out that he believes that there is no evidence of this. Now, central to Reed's claims, aside from the corroborating evidence from uh, four different witnesses, people that she had told about the assault at the time, are Senate records of her making an official complaint. She said that she made an official complaint to three different Senate staffers uh, and that the New York Times had spoken to those staffers and they said, well, you know, we don't recall. Uh, we don't remember. So now a complaint would be in the official records. So it's kind of important to find that. I mean, it, again, it's not the most important nor the only piece of evidence, but it would be substantial in corroborating her account, or if it doesn't actually exist, vindicating Joe Biden. So now when Biden was asked about his Senate records becoming public, he uh, said this. The fact is that there's a lot of things that of speeches I've made, positions I've taken, interviews that, that, that I did overseas with people, all of those things relating to my job. And the idea that they would all be made public in the fact while I was running for public office, they could be really taken out of context. The papers are position papers. They are documents that existed. And, and uh, that, that when I, for example, when I go, when I met with Putin or when I met with whomever and all of that to be fodder in a campaign at mm -hmm. this time, I don't know of anybody who's done anything like that. So he said there he's. He's not planning on releasing any of his Senate files. He's going to keep them sealed. Now, he originally planned on releasing those after he got out of public life. And it was actually set to be released uh, <clears throat> two years after he had uh, ended public life. That would have been in 2019. However, since he decided to run for president, he delayed that. Uh, and now those records remain sealed and he will not unseal them. So now he says, uh, and look, I guess it, politically it makes sense. Hey, man, I'm not going to release this stuff because it might contain things that look bad politically. Now he says, well, take me out of context. In reality, I think it would prove a lot of the things that we've said before uh, that he is a habitual liar. He Look, let's be honest. He has a history of lying and, and, and saying things that are not true and also plagiarizing. He had to quit his 88 campaign because of those things. And so you can look it up uh, where he said he was against the Iraq war as soon as it started. That's not true. PolitiFact fact-checked that and found it to be a lie. Uh, and, you know, you can look at his entire history of lying and you'll find that he's told quite a few whoppers. Uh, so now those uh, records, right, so you're not releasing the re those records now that you're under scrutiny. As I said before, uh, it is understandable for a uh, from a political perspective. But now that Biden has a credible allegation against him, a very serious one of sexual assault, releasing those records, well, I mean, look, if there is no complaint in there, then you've got nothing to worry about. And I think releasing it would be a prudent course of action even if it does allow Trump a little bit of fodder. Now, it's not as if Trump doesn't have reams of oppo research on you anyway. Biden is literally the most flawed candidate that we ever had. <laughs> and so it's kind of strange that he's not doing this. Stranger still is what recently got uh, reported by Business Insider. They reported that Biden's campaign had dispatched operatives to the University of Delaware's library to go through those sealed Senate records. Now, again, those records were supposed to be sealed until his career was over at the end of 2019. But again, as I mentioned before, he reversed that decision. So how, mu how many records are we talking about? About 1,875 boxes of photographs, documents, videotapes, and files, and 415 gigabytes of electronic records. So there is literally a lot of stuff but Biden's had a very, very long career. Now, Biden officials, according to this report in Business Insider, had rifled through the documents on at least one occasion, citing a statement from university spokeswoman 
Andrea Boyle Tippett. Now, the campaign's visit to the library came at some point after Biden announced his presidential campaign in April of 2019, but before mid-March 2020 when the library closed due to coronavirus. No one from the Biden team has visited since the closure, according to Tippett. Now, if you're going to, I mean, it, you know, if, if there's a complaint in there, it would be in the Senate records. I mean, if that's where it exists, that's where it, that's where it will where it will be. Okay, makes sense. Uh, now, the Washington Post and the Atlantic have been calling on Biden to unseal those records. So now that the uh, mainstream media uh, has basically declared the primary over, which, by the way, Biden has not clinched the nomination. He does not have enough delegates to clinch the nomination. And I point that out not because, oh, magically somebody is going to come, uh, come in and, you know, get enough of those delegates. I'm saying simply as fact, we still have primary elections to go. Even if New York canceled its primary, there are still delegates and they still have to apportion delegates because Biden does not have enough, as I said, to clinch that nomination. Right. So now it's important that they release these, that, that they unseal these records so that they can do an investigation, right? And so, unfortunately, they're not going to do that. Now, there's a couple of reasons. Again, Biden says, we don't need to release them. I don't want to release them. It's going to be uh, campaign fodder, right? Um, but another reason could be, again, that there's something in there or many things in there uh, that could even be related to this and could prove Tara Reid's story, which would be devastating. Uh, now, Biden also has close personal financial ties to the uh, to top officials on the board of the University of Delaware. Now, the chairman of the board bought Biden's house in 1996 for uh, $1.2 million dollars, reportedly a top dollar price given its condition. The University of Delaware's charter states that the Board of Trustees has entire control and management of the affairs of the university. And the current chairman of the board, John Cochran, is a longtime Biden donor and former CEO of MBNA. So, look, this is probably why the uh, University of Delaware itself has said, no, we're not going to unseal these records. We're going to help Biden out here. And, uh, you know, we're, we're just going to keep this uh, keep this under wraps. You can't get the records. Sorry. Now, MBNA is a bank that has given millions of dollars to Biden's campaigns throughout the years. Millions of dollars. In fact, Biden's nickname, you can remember, he's a senator from MBNA because of those very, very close ties in defense of the credit card industry. In fact, Elizabeth Warren first said she got into politics because of Biden and his corruption and his close ties with the credit card industry. And so, look, it's not a surprise that you've got people in this very important position that control his Senate records being very uh, close with Joe Biden. In total, seven other members at the University of Delaware's Board of Trustees have donated their donors to Biden's campaign. I'm detecting a little bit of a conflict of interest when it comes to this. And look, preventing a, a possible piece of evidence from being uncovered, if it exists, look, it bolsters her case if it exists. And if it doesn't, it helps Joe Biden. Either way, those records are getting a lot of scrutiny now. That puts Biden, that puts the University of Delaware in a very tight spot. Because it ain't like they're not going to start asking, especially when the president of the United States starts to chime in. I mean, look, this is this is a difficult situation. Biden's career is full of him spreading falsehoods. He previously dropped out, as I said before, from presidential contests uh, from contests uh, as a result of being caught up in those falsehoods. And he's plagiarizing other people. So this is a really bad situation for him. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization 
and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc. We're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYT Nation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on, and you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.